Hey, 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 happy Monday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. And welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch. Brought to you amazingly enough by thegaminggang.com, of which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So welcome aboard. Today is Monday, July 26th, 2021. This is live stream number 680. 80 zoinks <laughs> so if this is your first time visiting let me point out that this is very very casual it is not rocket surgery taking place here we are just hanging out talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news as well as taking a peek at a tabletop game release today i am going to be unboxing and taking a first look at Space Corp Ventures from GMT Games. This is the first expansion for Space Corp from designer John Butterfield. So stay tuned. We're going to be taking a peek at that. If this, once again, is your first time stopping in to check out the show, let me point out that about half of the dispatch is devoted to the latest in tabletop gaming news. And then the second half is when we'll take a look at the game. So kick back, relax. It'll be about 30 minutes and we will jump on in. But if you're watching this after the fact, there are timestamps. There are show notes on many people's browsers. You'll actually have the chapters broken down. I think, I think YouTube is now calling them clips or something along those lines. But you do not, if you're just hanging out, you want to check out the video because you want to see what's in Ventures. You don't necessarily have to hang around for the news. It's important that folks know that. I get people quite often saying, oh, man, I can't believe I had to wait 40 minutes for. Look at the show notes, man. There's timestamps. You didn't have to do that. But most people do watch the entire show because they want to see what's going on in the world of tabletop gaming. All right. Also should point out, if you like this video, by all means, give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It will not only let you know when the dispatch airs live, Monday through, well, it used to be Monday through Thursday. Now, I guess I should just say when it airs live here on YouTube, also let you know when I upload other videos, such as tomorrow, I will have an interview with author Mark Greenberg about the 5e necropolis kickstarter from necromancer games so check that out on the channel tomorrow sweet and i should also mention because this is a live stream that means chat is available it's not on screen it's one of the ways that i keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay but i do my best to pay attention to chat so if you want to say howdy or maybe you got a question, a comment, fire away. I will do my best to respond. So we are off and running right now. So first out the gate, Hunter Perkins is in chat with us. The Motor City Madman himself. Yes, the Madman. One of our chat moderators is with us. JP Falconer Honor is also with us as well. Mr. Eddie T. Who else we got? Boris is with us. And it's Mew. Not new, it's Mew. Well, welcome aboard, it's Mew. I believe this might be a first-time visit. So very cool. So kick back, relax, make yourselves comfortable. I'm going to jump on into the news. I had a 
interesting weekend, I'll, I guess I'll say. And uh, I'll talk about that after. I mean, it wasn't, like, terrible or bad or anything. It was, it was different. It was kind of wild one day, and then the next day it was... Anyway, let's jump on into the news because there is a new Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay card game. It is available for pre-order right now over at Cubicle 7 Entertainment. Here's the scoop on Elector Counts. Fight for control of the Empire. We are delighted to announce an exciting new Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay card game for two to four players. Elector Counts contains everything you need to vie for control of the Empire. This box contains a set of English rules, 112 game cards, a set of tokens, and a player aid card. Designed to mimic the card games enjoyed by ruffians, gamblers, and adventurers in inns and taverns across the Empire, Elector Counts is the perfect companion game to enjoy between your adventures in the old world. The cards are gloriously illustrated in art new and old, with iconic pieces joining novel depictions of the loyal soldiers, iconic locations, and famous personages of the Empire. The old emperor is dead, and his successor is anything but clear. In the halls of the powerful, diplomacy has failed, civil strife is rampant, and the trumpets of war ring loud and clear. Fight for control of the empire, securing your holdings with faith, steel, and gunpowder. Who among the elector counts is worthy of ascending to Sigmar's throne? Once again, elector counts is for two to four players. Don't have any uh, age range or game time to play. I'm taking a guess it's probably 30 to 45 minutes. It is going to carry an MSRP of $29.99. When it arrives in stores, sometimes, sometime, I should say, during Q4. Sometimes during Q4. I was I was very surprised. I so I see this as a uh, as a press release that was sent to me, and I thought, oh wow, okay, so there's an there's like another like role playing game release for Warhammer Fantasy role play from Cubicle Seven. And then I looked at, it, I was like, well, wait a second, this is a card game. Wow, all right, cool deal. Well, I mean, the reality is, Cubicle Seven's got a Got to start uh, getting a little more out there because uh, they're, I, I would say their licenses are dropping. I don't want to say left and right because it got to the point they didn't have a ton of licenses. But it's getting to the point where it's kind of Doctor Who and Warhammer. So, or Games Workshop, I guess I would say. Although I got to admit, I love all the, all the Warhammer fantasy role play stuff that C7 does. So very cool. Kevin R. Smith has joined us. So has Keldon. We got a good chat off and running. So JPF says, I didn't realize Space Corp had an expansion. I'll need to slog this part out until I show it. Yes, I know. Well, you could always come back after the fact and just click on the timestamp. Moving right along. Tabula Games will be releasing the Mystia. Essential edition later this year. Here's the dates. Survive the mysteries and perils of an ancient planet shaken by bizarre forces. Mysthea is the iconic Euro game that launched the Mysthea universe. Brought to the public in the Essential Edition. Mysthea is an area management and hand-building Euro game from Tabula Games, in which time-tested Euro mechanics receive a modern twist are infused with strong thematic flair. Fight for control of unexplored floating islands, places full of anomalies and strange phenomena. Gather your powers to make entire islands move. Join forces to fight the terrible monsters that inhabit them by creating an army and strongholds on these new frontiers. Mechanics such as the dynamic map, player customization, asymmetrical gameplay, and variable scoring systems which ensure endless strategic possibilities, combined with an in-depth story and rich themed design. This game does include premium components with unique cards and 71 highly detailed miniatures. 
Miss Thea Essential Edition is for two to five players, ages 14 and up, plays in two to two and a half hours. It will carry an MSRP of $95 when it arrives in the U.S. sometime this winter during Q4. Kind of interesting. So I thought, I thought this, well, I think this is a brand new edition. I think this is kind of a, like a deluxe edition, although they're calling it an essential edition. I thought originally that this was distributed by uh, Galica, Galactica Games, who usually works with Ares. I don't know. According to the information I've received, this is going to come from Tabula here to the U.S. So it doesn't look like there's any affiliation with uh, Ares at all or Galacta Games. Could be cool. I've never played it. Never played it, but it looks pretty interesting. I'll tell you that much. I like the idea of it's like you're trying to, to conquer these floating islands and you got to fight monsters who live on them. And could be kind of sweet. Although I had to kind of chuckle when it says uh, that it takes like tried and true Euro game mechanics and puts a modern twist on them. And it's like, yeah, well, Euro games haven't been around for like a hundred years. They are fairly modern. <laughs> Late seventies, early eighties. I mean, well, maybe actually later than that, if you want to consider like the Euro game movement, probably 2000 to 2005, I guess. Huh? All right. How about we talk a little war gaming because uh, our friends over at GMT Games, who we are looking at Space Corp Ventures in just a few moments, they have a really interesting looking game that's up on their P500. It just hit, I think it was uh, late last week. I've got the skinny on Downfall Conquest of the Third Reich, 1942 to 1945. Downfall is a two-player game on the conquest of the Third Reich in World War II. One player controls the Western Allies and the other the Soviet Union and their joint effort to destroy the Axis. Though the two players share the goal of defeating the Reich, each seeks a victory that favors their dominance in post-war Europe. To this end, each player controls two factions. The Western player commands the Western Allies faction and the OKH faction, that is the German and minor Axis armies that are battling in the East with the Soviet Union. The Soviet player commands the Soviet faction and the OKW faction, that is the German and Italian armies facing the Western allies in the West, obviously enough. Gameplay is driven by Downfall's innovative initiative track. The faction with the initiative chooses an order, pays its initiative cost by advancing their marker along the track and performs the order. Then the faction with the initiative based on the updated positions of the markers chooses the next order. There's no set sequence of play. Initiative expenditures determine who goes next. Progress of faction markers along the track also triggers strategic events, changes in weather, and advancement of game turns. Chad Jensen researched and experimented with Downfall for over 10 years, taking inspiration from classic strategic World War II games and incorporating ideas from his Fighting Formations initiative system to arrive at the four-faction, two-front design approach. John Butterfield, who we're going to be looking at his Space Corp ventures in a moment, well, a few moments, has picked up the design where Chad left off bringing it to completion. Downfall Conquest of the Third Reich, 1942 1945, is for two players, ages 14 and up, plays in two hours or a lot more than two hours. Can be pre-ordered for, get ready for it, get ready, $39. Going to carry an expected MSRP of $59. I got to say, this sounds really interesting. I remember reviewing Fighting Formations, and I recall the initiative system that I thought was pretty cool. So if you, if you did something that was you know, pr pretty big, pretty bold, it would cost quite a bit of initiative. So you'd move your marker, and then that would allow the other player to kind of have to catch up. So they might be able to do 
two or three smaller uh, options. And it was very, very cool. Very interesting. Very cool game. So uh, JPF says that mechanic in Downfall sounds so familiar to another World War II game, but the title escapes me. Fighting Formations, there were two editions, uh, two releases in it. But I don't know if that's what uh, JPF is thinking, but I can guarantee you that's it because GMT even mentioned it as well. But $39 for this game? That sounds like a steal. It really does. Uh, the late, great Chad Jensen and John Butterfield wrapping that up. So very, very nice. All right, let's talk about some role-playing game news because the current Humble Bundle that's out there for RPGs is featuring the popular fantasy role-playing game 13th Age from Pelgrain Press. Here's the skinny. Experience the 13th Age tabletop role-playing game as it was meant to be played. Tabletop RPGs are more popular than ever. It's time to start your own adventure. I kind of find it jumping out of this for a second. I find it kind of funny how Humble Bundle, whenever they're referring to like role-playing games as bundles, act as if people don't know what they are. Like it's, wait, hey, you're missing out on this really cool new thing. But that's okay, because this is a smoking deal. Enjoy exploring the 13th Age, an epic tabletop role-playing game, straight from two of the minds responsible for recent editions of Dungeons & Dragons. Combining streamlined combat with excellent indie story game design and packed with a collection of beautifully crafted books, music, digital maps, and more, such as the 13th Age Core Book, 13 True Ways, and the 13th Age Bestiary, take your character from a plucky adventure all the way to becoming an epic hero. 13th Age combines the best parts of traditional D20 rolling fantasy gaming with new story-focused rules. Designed so you can run the kind of game you most want to play with your group. Created by Rob Heinsu and Jonathan Tweet, 13th Age gives you all the tools you need to make unique characters who are immediately embedded in the setting in important ways. Quickly prepare adventures based on the PC's backgrounds and goals. Create your own monsters. Fight exciting battles and focus on what's always been cool and fun about fantasy adventure gaming. You can get aboard this bundle for a single solitary dollar. One dollar. But the highlight here is you can score all 34 items. There is some music. There's some maps. But the vast majority, I think it's like 30 of the items are PDFs. It is a $383 value. You can snag all of that for $25. Zoinks! That's another, like, smoking deal. I got smoking deals today, folks. <laughs> Welcome to Crazy Jeffs. Paint any car, any color, $99.99. Oh, sorry, that's a real shy. So, this offer does run through August 12th, so you got a good amount of time to get on board and Grab some cool stuff, save some dough. Your purchase will also help support Oceana, which is a nonprofit, I believe, that um, they look to protect our ocean. So I got to admit, I have never looked at 13th Age. I know it has been, it has been a really popular system. I, well, I don't know how popular it is, but I know I, I had heard people talk about it a lot. I would hear them talk about it quite often. And uh, people get all excited. There'll be a new 13th Age release. I just, I've just never taken a peek at it. But, uh, hey, you know what? I, I might actually go and get this humble bundle. Here's, the, here's one thing I do want to mention, though. Uh, you don't get the core rule book at any of the, I guess, it's really a donation, really. Uh, at any level under $25, which I think is a little unusual. A lot of times, usually like at the dollar, you get the core book. You don't get much else. But with this offer, you do have to pay $25 to get everything, which includes the core rule book. 
So Kevin says, kind of hilarious selling digital maps for 13th age when the combat system is all about not needing detailed maps. So is, uh, so is 13th age really theater that really focused on theater of the mind? Because I like that. I really do. I have never used miniatures for role-playing games, and I love minis. So don't get me wrong, and I enjoy painting miniatures too. I uh, just, I've got, I've got a bunch of miniatures that are like half painted because I never have time, but I gotta, I gotta point out, I've always been theater of the mind. So to me, that appeals to me. So if anybody in chat is familiar, really familiar with 13th age, chime in. And of course, if you are catching the show after the stream, there's something really cool about 13th age. You'd like me to know, tell me, well, let me know in the comments section. So, Nicholas Stanishek has arrived. Good to see you, Nicholas. Thanks for popping on in. He's just in time for my last news piece of the night. Following a very successful Kickstarter, the massive Starship Warden Adventure and Setting book is available in print and PDF from Troll Lord Games. Here's what I know. They designed the Starship Warden to house, feed, and clothe over a million people. To do this, the designers outfitted this massive ship, miles long and miles wide, to serve as a home for people offering up quarters and cafeterias. Restaurants and malls all intermingled with a host of features to mimic Earth-like conditions, from artificial lakes to fields of crops. Her maiden voyage began with hopes and dreams of a future like nothing humanity had ever seen. But that was long ago. There's been no contact between the warden and Earth for many long years, for on the ship something went horribly awry. Radiation leaks, singularity, mutations, madness, what it was only the inhabitants could say. Whatever it was, her inhabitants, those who live, dwell in a world of want and despair, and when they're not preying upon one another, they fight beastly mutant cyborgs, self-aware robotic humanoids, and all the other creatures who vie for the precious resources of the beleaguered starship. It's your time now. Rise in the chaos of the Warden and bend its apocalypse to your will, or be ground away in the lonely quiet of deep space. The Starship Warden is a sandbox adventure setting written by James M. Ward and Christopher Clark. It's intended for use with the Star Siege RPG, a siege engine game, I should say. But if you're a loyal fan of the old, oh, I don't know, Metamorphosis Alpha, don't despair. The Starship Warden is written to allow you to use your original MA rules and begin a lifetime worth of play. The Starship Warden is a 600-plus page black and white book, an interstellar starship set adrift with 17 monstrous decks to explore, hordes of creatures and mutants, treasures both fantastic and scientific. It is a world within a ship, a setting like no other. The 648-page hardcover, yes, let me, let me say that one more time, 648-page hardcover is available from Troll Lord Games for $79, and 99 cents. You can grab the PDF, which is now available over at Drive Through RPG, for nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. As you can see, I am sharing some uh, some images from a preview chapter, which is actually further into the book. I think this is around I think page four hundred or so of the book. All I gotta say is, holy cow! It's like, oh my gosh, 648 pages. And I got to admit, I have always had kind of an interest in Metamorphosis Alpha because it is, as far as I understand, it is the first science fiction role-playing game. And in fact, I thought it's like the second or third role-playing game, period. And it just always sounded really interesting and i think part of it is because of expedition to the barrier peaks 
which to me seemed like that was almost like a mashup of D&D and Metamorphosis Alpha. So this looks really wild. Very, very cool. So definitely check that out. Do want to point out, it, you're seeing like one of, the, uh, one of the pages here. It looks like there's some stock images that are used in the book too, or public domain images. So I don't know. It, it might have kind of an odd layout. I don't know. But there is some like regular artwork like you would have found in the old modules back in the day. So Flaming Huron has joined us. Very cool. Our other chat moderator has arrived. Kevin Thorpe has joined us in chat too. We got a nice chat going tonight. All right. So that's it for the news essentially tonight. There is one thing that did pop up. Uh, I got an email about uh, 45 minutes before I started streaming. I was like, well, uh, da, 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 da. It's like, it's like, I got uh, an email 45 minutes before I started streaming the show. So there is a zombie apocalypse role-playing game called Z-Land, the survival, uh, survival horror RPG. I need to wet my whistle here. It's from... Stormforge Productions, it is pretty well, you know, review, well, okay, it's, it's well reviewed on drive through RPG. I'll, I'll say that. I know really nothing about this role-playing game except for this. Today, they're celebrating its third anniversary, so you can snag the 260-page PDF over at drive through RPG for a dollar. Normally it's $19.99. Today only you can score that PDF for a single solitary buck. That is a pretty sweet deal. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, one of the things that I, I hear that Z-Land really has going for it, as opposed to other like zombie apocalypse role-playing games, is that the contagion and, and stuff like that is not just kind of like hand-waved where it's like, oh, well, the game master can figure that stuff out. No, it's supposed to have like a, a big detailed, like this is what happened, this is what's happening. There's like different, uh, they, there's like stats in that for like the different phases of a zombie and stuff. It's very, very cool. The madman says a dollar. Yes, please. Kevin Thorpe says 88 pence. Two, four, five trioxins with us in chat too. Very, very cool. Pointing out that uh, the Starship Warden book is 10 pages longer than the Pathfinder 2nd Edition core book. Is, is it really? Is the 2nd Edition core book that big? I gotta... I, I don't remember. I know it's, I know it's big. I, I know it's, there's, there's a pretty big page count to it. I just didn't remember it being over 600 pages. Anyway, so I'm talking about drive through RPG. So of course, if you are going to go visit drive through RPG, please stop by the gaming first, click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, even if it's for a dollar, I get a little portion of that sale. And all those, well, if it's a dollar, I'm sure it's like a couple of pennies. But all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep the gaming gang around. All right. So as I mentioned, I had a pretty interesting uh, weekend. So if you follow the show, if you were watching last week, you know, last Wednesday was my dad's 85th birthday. So that's why I didn't do a show on Wednesday. I did it on Thursday instead. Well, we also had planned a surprise party for him on Saturday. So it was pretty funny. Uh, I left early to give my sister-in-law a hand setting up. Uh, they, had, they were able to rent out a 
little community center from this uh this this i don't want to say like apartment complex it's more like uh like townhouses and stuff like that and so she had rented it out because she has a friend who lives in that development or whatever and i my dad's like oh where are you going so early i said oh i'm i'm gonna go to elliot's play some games he's like you're leaving this early i said yeah i said yeah it takes an hour to get over there and he's like yeah yeah so my brother had asked my dad to go over to his town to my brother's townhouse to give him a hand fixing this faucet on the outside of the townhouse so he got over there and then of course we had uh aunts and uncles cousins uh there were uh you know i don't know about 25 people at this party and it was really funny because then my brother said uh oh yeah because my dad had asked where's my sister-in-law and, and my niece madison and my brother said oh they're over at this party for like friends of the family who i know and uh my sister-in-law calls my brother and says oh yeah I forgot to bring this wine to the party. Could you bring it over? So my brother tells my dad, hey, you know, we need to go get a file. So we're going to go stop at the hardware store, Menards. And, uh, you know, well, before we do that, I mean, we're going to drop this wine off at this party Don forgot to take it with. So my dad comes walking in. He's like, so all day on Sunday, my dad kept saying, I can't, I can't believe you guys pulled that. Can't believe he tricked me. Hey, I mean, he he was very excited by it. But yeah, so that was kind of funny. So that was very cool. And then then yesterday, uh, I had a bad day. So, you know, how the doctor said, yeah, you know, following the triple bypass, you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. And I said, well, you know, I haven't had any bad days. There's been some days where I didn't have much energy, but I didn't have bad days. Yeah, yesterday sucked. Yesterday was that. Just didn't feel good. and Because I, I always have discomfort here. Uh, and supposedly it will go away in months. But, you know. But it was, I was, I was having pain. And I was like, man, damn. Just had no energy. It was weird. But I'm, I'm I feel back to normal today. We're back to normal enough. So something else I thought was funny on Friday, and I had mentioned this last week as well, uh, for my nephew Cameron's birthday, which is next month, I had sent him a copy of White Box Fantastic Medieval Adventures or Adventure Game, uh, a copy of The Monsters Know What They're Doing, and seven sets of RPG dice. So he called up and he was all pumped. It's like, Uncle Jeff, thanks so much. And he was talking about that on Saturday, he was going to be running. Well, he said he's running Dungeons and Dragons, but he's not. And I told him, don't be telling people you're running Dungeons and Dragons because you're not running Dungeons and Dragons. You're kind of just doing your own <laughs> kind of role playing game and uh, using adventures that I've run for him. And like Elliot and things like that as, you know, his background, not knowing what happened in all the adventure. So he was very excited. So I will have to talk to him this weekend and find out uh, how did it go. But yes, I told him, I said, don't call it, Don't say you're running Dungeons and Dragons. Just say, hey, um, you want to play in this role playing game I'm, I'm doing? And if somebody goes, well, what is that? You can say, well, you know, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. I'm like, but don't say it's Dungeons and Dragons because you might get somebody who plays Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> who's part of his group, you know, because he's, he's uh, in uh, advanced training for the Air National Guard. So he's out of basic. He's, he's into his, you know, like MOS or whatever. And I said, uh, you might get somebody who plays Dungeons and Dragons and they're going to be like, the hell is this? Don't say that. All right. So Doug Roberts is in chat with us. Very, very cool. I think I had noticed uh, it's Muse said that they tend to uh, catch the stream, but they never get to watch live. 
So Doug's like, yay, they're catching a live show today. Very good. So the last thing I do want to mention is I have rolled out the first week of the Gaming Gang Game Auction 2021. So if you recall, last year did the same sort of thing. I did an auction. It's all on the website. Basically, there's a, there's a post. You go to the, the website itself. You go to thegaminggang.com. You'll see there's a little image for you to click on that's got a link. So rather than just throwing like 70 items up there, every week I'm going to do 10, 11 items. And those items are only going to be available for that week. If nobody bids on them, then uh, at some point they'll go up on eBay. But I did figure I was going to give folks a shot at some, and there's, there's war games, there's regular board games, like more family oriented board games, lots of role playing game stuff. So you're going to see a lot of role playing game stuff. So it, it'll probably end up being probably, I would think between 60 and 70 items. Again, it's just not all at once because for one, I don't want to have to be shipping all that stuff out like I did last year, having all these boxes that needed to get shipped out. So one thing I do want to mention, I do have four. I have four of the 5E Adventures in Middle Earth books. Two of them are region guides. Two of them are adventure books. And if you notice, the the Opening bid on those is $270. And I just want to mention for anybody who goes, holy cow, what are you talking about? Each of the region guides are selling on eBay for approximately $180 to $200. So, so it's both of those plus the two adventure books. So, and once again, I mean, if nobody bids on it, that's okay. I'll put them up on eBay, but just figured I'd get it, uh, you know, give people a chance to uh, pick up some cool stuff. And uh, of course, it's all pristine. Only either read through it to review it or, or played it to review it. So, all right. So Kevin says, heck, guess it's not possible to take part on this side of the pond. All depends. It all depends. I know. Unfortunately, Flaming Huron, the it, it cost to ship stuff is pretty high. But, yes, the madman's already bid. So, uh, yes, he's got, he's trying to get dibs on the few and cursed. So, yes, the madman says, I didn't realize the adventures in Middle Earth books are going for so much. I have all the books. Yes, I was shocked. Well, I figured they're out of print, so they'd be going for something. But I was amazed to see both the region guides are going for, for the most part, anywhere from about 145 to 200 each. And the thing is, it's the more recent, because I always look at, you know, sold items. I don't look to see what, what's up for auction and what, you know, what they're asking. I always look for the stuff that's sold. And interestingly enough, it's the recent stuff that's been going for like the 180, 190. It's like, wow, it's, it's going up. So pretty wild. All right. So uh, check it out. And of course, every Sunday afternoon around four o'clock central time, there will be a new round of items out there. So, Kevin Thorpe's like checking in for some sweet Call Cthulhu stuff. I will tell you right off, right off the bat, there will not be any Call of Cthulhu stuff. So, yeah, sorry. There won't be any Warhammer Fantasy roleplay stuff either. So, but uh, there's lots of other stuff. There's Coriolis. I've got the uh, Symborum starter set, box set. That's up there, of course, as I mentioned, Adventures in Middle-Earth, too. All right. So, without further ado, we are going to jump on in 
and unbox and take a first look at Space Corp Ventures from GMT Games. It's designed by John Butterfield with artwork provided by Kurt Miller. This expansion is for one to four players, ages 12 and up, plays in one to four hours, and does carry an MSRP of $45. Let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Space Corp Ventures. So when I mentioned this last week, I said this is the final expansion for Space Corp. And this is actually the first expansion for Space Corp. I was thinking of uh, Space Empires 4X because I know there was a final expansion that was coming out for that. If uh, you're kind of curious about Space Corp, Definitely check out my re review. I thought this is a very cool game. Personally, I think I like it more as a solitaire game than as a multiplayer game. And that's kind of because the game can take a good amount of time. I know they're saying it's, you know, one to four hours. I've, I didn't see that. I, I have not seen any hour long scenario. All right, so it says Space Corp Ventures is the first expansion for Space Corp 2025 to 2300 AD, a game of exploring and developing the solar system and beyond. Space Corp Ventures introduces unique enterprises via 14 different HQ boards, each putting a player in control of the different corporation, agency, or institution with its own capabilities and missions. Each HQ assigns specific start cards, infra, advantages, and limitations for all three eras. These advantages and limitations evolve in Planeteers and Starfarers, and each HQ has a special alternate final profit option at the game end. Ten of the 14 HQ maps can be flipped over to play the Space Corp Solitaire game with an enhanced HQ against competition AI, but beware... Four new competition HQ will match wits with the solitaire player, each with advanced attributes tuned to each different player HQ. And there's a little bit more, but let's jump on into this. I will tell you, this box has some heft to it. So I'm going to take a guess. Maybe that's going to be from... The HQ boards. So Doug Roberts asks if anybody's ever heard of Noble Knight Games. Yes. Noble Knights. In fact, we when we started off with the gaming gang, we were kind of trying to get into an affiliation with them. And it just didn't, it just did not come to fruition. We just couldn't iron out everything. But they were super nice. And if I remember correctly, I think they're I think they're in Indiana. They're actually a, a pretty good company to get your hands on out of print stuff. All right, so we've got the solo rule book. Let's just move this off to the side here. So talking about the game components. 10 unique HQs. There's your competition HQ. So, so it looks like 10 of the HQs are, are player facing and four of them will be for competition for the AI. We've got new action cards, new contract cards, Starfare's scoring cards. So setting up era one, Mariners. That's one of the aspects about Space Corp that's, that's really cool is that Depending on what era you're in, it's going to change the way the board is. So you'll use a different board. So early on, you're just here, you know, with the uh, the Milky Way and stuff. like. It's, it's actually very, very wild how it happens. And as you, as you move into new eras, you'll use a different board and just further and further and further out. So it's pretty wild. All right, talking about uh, oh, 
getting set up. So we had getting set up for, yep, there you go. There's Planeteers, which is the second era, and then Starfarers. So that's the solo. Then we got the multiplayer rule book. So essentially, this is the rule book, which actually is cardstock. That's kind of wild. So it's cardstock like a player aid would be. So talking about setting up Mariners, Planeteers, as well as Starfarers. All right. So what is this? This is like a player aid. So competition-based match events table. What I find interesting, and I'm not sure how many folks out there have, have played Space Corp, but GMT gave that like a four out of nine as far as the complexity. And I got to be honest, I thought it was a little more complex than that. I would have, I would have uh, kind of had that a little higher up. So yeah, so there's uh, some discussion about Noble Knight. Yeah, so there you go. So Doug says they got the hunters and the hunted from Noble Knight. Nice. Very cool. So isn't the Hunters, it's from Constant Press. So I'm not sure if the Hunted was. I'm not sure if that was still considered Constant Press through GMT or not. But I know the Hunters, which I review, is, uh, is Constant Press. So John Krantz and the Constant World folks. All right, so here we've got some new boards. And real nice card stock. So, and as you can tell, see there's glare coming off of it. So there is a finish on these as well. So here we have ahead of the curve for two to four players. Space Corp, two to four players. Allied Transit for two to four players. Now, let's take a look at the back. So here we've got, oh, that's still ahead of the curve. And that's still Allied Transit. Oh, no, here, it's for one player. So that's Allied Transit for one player. That's for two to four. Here's Polaris GCI single player. And that's for multiplayer. So kind of taking a look here. So these are where you're going to drop down your cards. And then you've got your bases and teams. It's been a long time since I played Space Corp. So I, I remember some aspects of it, but I don't remember you know, each and every single mechanic to it. So Discover Prime. And then we have Next Generation. For a second, I was like, did they cross that out? And it's like, no, it's a white arrow going through it. So then we've got, here's Next Generation again. And Drell Institute. That's a single player. So here we have the Drell Institute for three or four players. Huh, that's weird. Maybe, yeah, I guess we've got some HQs that are only for either solitaire or three or four players. So this is DP Roberts Limited. Then we have Humanistics. Then we've got Inframax. And New, Mo New Nomads. So it looks like these two HQs are solitaire only. You don't get any big labs. Right, what else we got? Got more. Got a few more of these boards. Like I said, I thought that's why this was relatively hefty. So here's another that's for three to four players. And we've got GravTech, which is solitaire.
So if you'll notice, taking a peek at like, right, move one, move zero, build zero. These are like automatic actions that you could do, move one, build one. Because normally you'll, you'll play a card from your hand into here. Telling you what, you know, giving you options of things you can do. So it looks as if you automatically have the ability. So your stellar security. All right. So this is competition. DP Roberts Limited. So we already saw that that's available as an HQ for these, uh, for the single player. There's Humanistics as three or four players. So I guess that's not just a solo. And then here's Nova Capital as our competition. So the madman's asking, this looks pretty interesting. How heavy is this? Simple rules are a learning curve. So if memory serves me correctly, when you first learn how to play the game, especially you're going to want to learn how to play solitaire. And you'll play the first era as, as its own game because you can, even as multiplayers. It's another thing aspect of space corp that's really cool is that if you want a shorter game you can just have it where you know people are just looking to to get onto mars you know we don't have to be like going further out you know we don't have to start worrying about transhumanity or anything like that so it it is Like I said, I remember it being more complex than what they say it is, but that tends to be a GMT thing. I always feel that GMT normally will have their complexity scale a little bit lower than what I would, I would put it at. Almost always. Not, not every single time, because just recently there was a review. Well, not that recent, but there was a review I did for a GMT game, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm surprised they actually rated it this high. Complexity wise, I, I think it's a little lower. So that is one of the aspects of how you learn how to play the game is by actually just playing through the era's solitaire against the AI. So uh, it looks like chat disconnected again. Really weird. It seems as if YouTube's always got to drop the chat at around like the 50, 55 minute mark. I have no idea, but uh, I'm taking a peek here. I always double check because usually the first clue to me that the stream has dropped is that chat will disconnect. But uh, now we're going good. So everything should still be, everybody should still be hanging, watching. All right. So then we got our last competitor, which is Space Corp. So. You're welcome, Madman. More than happy to, to share that. So JPF says it's a bit of a brain burner. I'm going to take, uh, I guess it's, but they hold your hand in the beginning. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, that's a little bit how uh, Atlantic Chase is, which I swear I'm going to get a review of that out. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, that's sort of this. And, but the thing is, if I remember correctly, Space Corp, the way the rules were laid out to teach you was a little different. And then the way, like, Atlantic Chase is laid out to teach you stuff is way different. Super different. All right, so we got a little disc. So we got a little orange disc here. And then we have our deck of cards. Not a not a bunch. Looks like maybe there's twenty five or so. All right, come on. There we go. So we've got contract cards. We have HQ cards. 
These are, I guess, uh, final profit cards. And then we've got some additions to the game deck. So we have salvage. So we've got a couple of new salvage cards there. We've got time. And then we've got negotiation. So those are the new cards that are for the actual game deck. So we have standard profit for each of the HQs. But it looks like here it's just the same thing on all of these. No colonies, lose one. One colony, gain one. Two colonies, gain four. So those are all identical. But then... Your alternate final profits are all different. And with these, uh, these are actually used during the, when you're playing Starfarers, which is the, like, 2300 AD. So that's what that is. All right, so we got those. Then we got contract cards. Let's see what we got. Mariner's contract. Oops. So two to four players. So you'll notice that the contract cards are dual sided there. So for one to four players or two to four players. So it's basically kind of like an objective. So that's what the contracts are. You have, you have an objective that you're trying to complete. And you'll get like mega bucks if you do so. That's what the the T is. If I remember right, I think I think it is like your money. So, all right. So we've got the new cards. And of course we got an insert here. So we've got the new cards. We've got this little disc. And then we have all of these boards for the HQs. Player aid card. We've got the multiplayer rules, which is basically a player aid card. And then we've got the solo rule book. And that is what we find when we take everything from Space Corp. Come on, you. What's with the box? Close up right. <laughs> Closing at an angle. All right, that's what we find when we take everything from Space Corp Ventures outside the box. All right, and hopefully I will have a review of Space Corp Ventures in the very near future. So as JPF says, uh, he's telling the madman that uh, he should enjoy it. And uh, is talking about resurrecting the base game with this new expansion. Yeah, just like uh, JPF, I have not, I haven't, uh, I haven't played Space Corp since I did my review. So it has been a while, but it is, it is a different game. It, it is. It is a very cool game, especially if you're if you enjoyed watching Mars on Nat Geo. I would think you would probably dig the game. Now, once again, it's it's not like you're you're playing to colonize Mars. It's not the only thing that's going on. You're, there's a lot of stuff, and uh, it's kind of cool how as you're playing, you're establishing just like I almost want to say bases for you to use as jumping off points to go further out and further out and further out. Just like uh, some folks think if we were to decide we're going to try to colonize Mars, that we would need to have a base on the moon for us to be able to do, do most of the launches and things like that from the moon. Other people don't think so. They don't, they don't think it's a requirement to have a moon base. So there you have it. 
All right. Anyway, anything else going on in chat? Just take a look to see if I missed out anybody asking anything. All right, cool. All righty. So on Wednesday's show, I don't have it to show you because it's supposed to be arriving on Wednesday. But on Wednesday's show, if it arrives, we're going to take a first look and page through Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Altidorf Crown of the Empire, which is from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. So there are three new Cubicle 7 releases that are hitting supposedly on Wednesday. And uh, we've got some Age of Sigmar, Soulbound. We've got some Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay as well. So it should be pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, I believe we still have some Osprey stuff on its way, too. So we'll see what's going on. Also, remember, check out my interview with Mark Greenberg later on tomorrow. It'll be probably late tomorrow afternoon. I'll have that up. Uh, we're going to talk about Necropolis, which is a new adventure setting for 5E from Necromancer Games, which it's already fully funded. Uh, I think it's at like 300% or something like that. All right. That's it for tonight's show. Don't forget, swing on over to thegaminggang.com to check out the first week of the game auction. But don't forget, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when I stream the dispatch right here on YouTube. I'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as tomorrow's interview with Mark Greenberg. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit GamingGang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at TheGamingGang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you so much for those of you out there who are hanging out in chat, watching live. Always appreciate you fine folks keeping me company. But of course, I also know there are quite a few people out there who don't have an opportunity to watch live. So thank you very much, even if you're watching on Memorex. However you watch, I definitely do appreciate it. Of course, until I see you Wednesday... Here's hoping that each and every one of you has an opportunity to get some excellent gaming in with your very own gang. Oh, you're still here. Well, while you're kicking it, how about subscribing to the Gaming Gang channel or seeing the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch for finding out what YouTube recommends you check out here at my channel. And of course, don't forget, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com.